Brass is the definition of picking up a book for the artwork. Because, holy Lord, there was something going on here that just was not in any other of these Image Comics books. Um, Richard Bennett is the uh, artist. And I just remember... Um, the first time I ever noticed him is that he started inking over Jim Lee. And I talked about this recently in one of the issues of Wildcats, the most recent issue that I did, where Richard Bennett took over and was inking over Jim Lee for whatever reason. Scott Williams went wherever. And it was an instant difference. Not, well, I, was gonna, I have to say not as good, but certainly not bad, just different. Hyper detailed. All kinds of details added all over the place that I just feel like Jim Lee never put in his pencils. And this Richard Bennett comes along and this guy likes to do detail. He's going to add all kinds of stuff all over the place and just give it a whole new layer of design and style. And it just brought something. It looked good. It's interesting, but it's not the best version of Jim Lee's artwork, honestly. It's not as good as the Jim Lee stuff, or rather the... Jim Lee inked by Scott Williams, I should say. But at some point, they announced Brass, a miniseries drawn by this guy. Now, I mean, holy Jesus God, look at this. Like, giant gold mecha transformer thing. Look at all the details in this gun. Rob Liefeld, fuck your mama, dude. Look at this shit. Look at the detail on a real, actual, badass gun and technological designs. I got to get over giving that guy shit. It's just more fun because I know everyone kind of expects it from me. But when you see guys that put in this type of energy and excitement into the craft, um, God, it just stands out. So I'm going to preface this whole review. There's three issues. We're going to just flip through them real quick. As is the case with many of these image comics, as much as I tried, I could not be bothered to give a shit about the story. I I don't know. I mean, these guys are never professional writers or artists. They grow up reading comics and they have stories in their head. So they decide to sit down and start telling a story. I'm doing the same damn thing. Um, except I'm an amateur loser nobody. But the story just doesn't read for shit in any way that makes me care. So you're kind of just here for the artwork. And I, Richard Bennett and this book, Brass, is an, another thing I'll say about it is there's a lot about it that I like, but I can say that there's something about it that just doesn't excite me. It doesn't quite get me there. Um, it's And I can't put my finger. Everything's there dynamic like they they clearly put in the time and the effort to put out the best thing that they could make and the artist richard bennett is good lord is he putting forth everything he's got everything is on the page it's there and i applaud that i respect the hell out of it you cannot deny the amount of detail that went to these cityscapes there's this I, you know, I don't know what's going on. There's this guy, he's, this technological stuff is taking over him. He's freaking out. All this gear is oozing around on him. And then, what do we flip open to? A double page spread? Holy good Lord. I mean, this has to be, I, I don't know any of the backstory of why this was created, what their dreams and hopes were, what Richard Bennett's influences and... But you can't help but look at this and go, well, clearly he's into anime, right? I mean, of course he is. I mean, look at this shit. <laughs> that is some hyper-detailed stuff, and this is straight out of some anime, I, you know, whatever the hell it is. But detailed, going into the backgrounds forever. Man, he put everything into this. It's shattered like streetlight and the lamppost and the buildings and then... God, you can't help but look at this and just go, holy shit. And I think that a lot of these books, that's what gets you. You just look at it and going, holy God, is this good? And then you kind of flip through it and maybe you try reading it. Maybe you love the story. Maybe if you do, great. I, I mean, I appreciate that. But you flip through it and you just kind of like, you start reading it and you're like, this is... I, uh. So you just get the basic idea, like from the visuals. 
Looks like a church building. A guy's a janitor. He's cleaning up. But look at these crazy down angles. And he's got like mirrors doing reflections. And guy, I just look at the, like the face here looks kind of weird. It's kind of anatomically strange. But the lighting, the cross hatching, really, really good. I'm, did I miss a credits page? It's probably in the very, very back. Let's check it. Um, all right, so pencils and inks is Richard Bennett. Color is Monica Bennett. I, so I'm I his wife, I guess. I mean, it could be a sister, but I would assume his wife. Um, dialogue is Aaron Weisenfeld. Story by Richard Bennett and Aaron Weisenfeld. So um, looks like they're the ones who created it. But just Richard Bennett, man, just getting the opportunity to just draw some of the most detailed, crazy artwork. You know, his figure work, his faces, they're a little strange, a little cartoonish, and that's fine. Um, it, it's just, it, it's not my favorite. It wasn't my favorite then, and it's not my favorite now, but like I said, you can tell that he was just putting everything on the page. Like, I'm just looking at this panel. And like, the detail they put into this bottle she's trying to get the lid off of. It's just so freaking good. Heavy lighting, cross-hatching all over the place. Look at this guy's weird, old, creepy-looking face there. And then there. Look at the detail in that thing. Crazy inking textures. So I'm trying to get it where it focuses the best so you can see it. Um, this guy, he's sick. His doctor's telling him sick. You're going to die. Crowded street shot. Cars. I mean, I hate drawing cars. But here we are. This Richard Bennett will draw anything. Look at this crazy close-up of his eyes. All kinds of like, you call it unnecessary cross-hatching. But it's fun. It's visually exciting. It's... Um, it's pretty damn neat. Um, and lots of panels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just right there. He's on that bus and this guy's like showing people his junk. And so then he happens to have a giant badass freaking crazy ass gun. Look at that thing. Look at the insanity kind of maniac facial expression on that guy. Um... Jesus, Lord. You're going to hear me saying this a lot, how um, obviously Richard Ben is just putting it all out there. Shooting a guy out the front of the bus and onto the ground. Got a cat. Got a detailed cityscape. Another thing is, like, I get the story. Um, you got to have setup. You got to care about these guys. But, like... Page one or page two and three, we get a double splash page of, like, I'm here for this guy, right? We're here for the big golden transformer. That's what I want to see. With the giant guns, I want to see him murdering the shit out of, I don't care, anything. But you get to see him at the beginning of the book. And if I remember the story, you got to have the setup. You got to have who's the guy, where is he from, what's his motivations, what's his life like, get him into a situation, have him in his the most dire circumstance you could come up with and then get him his powers, his abilities, his weapon, his whatever, his badass brassness, whatever it's going to be. And But then you're spending all these pages before you even get to the golden transformer that you want to see, which I think you'll get at the very last page. So, you know, cliffhanger to make you want to get going. I don't know if that's the best way. Like, I, I get the point. I, what else do you do? You could start out with him in the outfit, it doing his stuff, and slowly reveal parts of his history later on as it goes. But show me what the hell I'm here for. I'm here for golden, golden mega gun transformer. I'm not here for like weird trench coat wearing dude running out of his house, jumping out of it. Holy lord! Look at this shot. Look at the perspective. Look at these creatures. Good God. Not many people, like Richard Bennett, and you know, it said the creative team created by Richard Bennett and Aaron Weisenfeld, that Aaron Weisenfeld got into some hardcore hyper detail. So you can see how these guys are homies. 
wanting to create these books together because they both have a very similar vibe. Um, I know, I kind of know like what happened to Aaron Weisenfeld. He went off to be like a, like a traditional fine artist painter. Uh, he left comics behind a thousand years ago and he probably has never looked back. I don't know what Richard Bennett's doing. I need to look that up because God, is this interesting. Um, I found that happening uh, with myself a couple of times here. Like there's artists that were big for a minute with these studios and then the industry crashed and I think a lot of them had to go off and find other stuff to do. Um, there's a, there's a, actually I, I've had the opportunity to uh, contact an artist on one of the Top Cow books or, well, I mean, I, you know, went and found out like, where, where is this guy? Where is he at? Uh, Jordan Raskin on Ripclaw. I, where has he been? Where is he going? Where, whatever happened to him? So I kind of went and looked him up and he's on Instagram and kind of struck up a conversation with him. And I don't know, there might be a, a conversation coming with Jordan Raskin, artist of Ripclaw. But uh, we'll get to that when the time comes. But ha that having happened, where's Richard Bennett? Where's this guy? Because holy shit, if this is what he's drawing, when was this printed? This has got to be in the late mid to late 90s, 96. If he was drawing like this all that time ago, what the hell is he doing now? Good God. Look at this robotic fly. This is just, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to be insulting, but as much as I kind of don't care about the story, he, there's every page, every panel, heart and soul is dumped into it. Look at this gun. This looks like a Beretta with the laser sight on it. Textures, lighting, details. It's all there. This great down shot of a city shot. Roofs, cars, lighting, people. Jeez, this is so good. Weird looking lady's face. Low angle on like a subway, trains, rats running around under there. Uh, just, and then look at this. Look at this giant double page spread and all these like probably test subjects. You gotta have a bunch of muscly dudes and one naked girl, because of course. But look at this technological gear. That's another thing I've discovered that's hard to draw. When you gotta draw a bunch of nonsensical technological bullshit. All these little nooks and crannies and shapes and gears and joints and I don't know. It's you'd think it would be simple. I think it's something you can kind of, once you start figuring it out, you can kind of start playing around with it and changing it up and coming up with all kinds of different artistic things. I can't, I like this. Look at this guy's face, the lighting on that and that mask. Really cool, but what a great double page spread again. And then, yeah, these guys are test subjects pushing a button, interjected, whatever's going on, screaming. Of course, the experiment goes wrong. Another great, highly over-rendered face, but it looks so fucking cool. Explosions, people come out of it, and what in the fuck of hell of ships is this? Man, look at this. They speak in barcode. Oh, like this guy's like head is just floating like a jar of goo. It looks, I guess, I mean, I guess he could be connected to the rest of his body. Glowing electronic guy. The girl looks like a robo bug. They all kind of look like robo bugs. Look at the joints and the hands. So no, you don't get to see the, the title character brass, except for that opening shot. But you get to see what are probably potentially a team of bad guys for him to fight. Um, so... Is it the best way to do an issue one? I understand it. I respect it 100%. But, I don't know, God, I just, I want to see Golden Transformer. Well, let's get into issue two. Another double page spread. Look at that. Look at that cover. I love the hand, like his face here and this hand of all the stuff just forming around it. It's so strange. I would never think of this as a cover, this weird angle on his face. It's like it's a low angle looking up at him like this is the ceiling we're looking at. These are vents. And here's those, you know, those tanks with people inside them. This is a low angle looking up. God. Issue three of Brass. Do we get to see Golden Transformer? Great. Jesus, look at this. All the detail everywhere. Perfect circle templates used in the inking shiny reflections 
gears, cords, weird tentacle thing going down this guy's mouth. I don't know if it's going down his mouth or out coming out of it. I'm going to assume it's going into him. And then those people that were turned in these techno creatures. Looks like we're here. Shit, look at that gun. Um, I was talking about just recently. I got to grab those. Where did they go? Hold on. Um, it's kind of funny. It's kind of irrelevant. Um, I was looking at... I just did a video where... Sorry, I'm getting it out right here. Punisher Warzone and Romita was doing these guys shooting guns right here. And I was talking about how I feel like the spent bullet casings wouldn't come out in such a straight, even pattern. Like I get why they're coming out. They're shooting out the same way. I feel like they would be more chaotic and scattered ass everywhere. I was actually talking about that just a bit ago on this thing right here. Well, here's an example of what I was talking about. Look at those spent shell casings. Just they're each one is like flipped up and around. You see the front of some, you see the back of some, they're all over the place. It feels more like what it would really be. It, minor detail, who cares, right? But damn, oh, okay. <laughs> this is like regular human guy and this bug thing had this like thing stuck through the back of his outfit. That's what was coming through. So this was coming out of him, killing him. Now, what a horrible way to be murdered. That is awesome. That is a hell of a double page spread. Oh, geez, now we got to flip it over. This is the girl that was there that got turned into one of these creatures. Some of the storytelling's a little unclear. She's ejecting explosive devices from somewhere, flying over here and blowing things up. I'm guessing. God, look at this shot down here of like that moon in the background it looks like screen tones put on there richard bennett is not taking any shortcuts anywhere man this is crazy stuff amidst all the death and destruction and carnage a bit of the golden goo what is this wet works drips down hits this guy in the eye is this our hero is this mr brass that's a hard angle to draw on a face this low angle looking up at it, the eyes, nose, mouth, chin. Man, that's a hard angle, but he got it. No, this has got to be our brass guy. Herschel Goldstein. Oh, my dear Jesus Lord. His name is Goldstein, and he becomes brass. What are the chances? Um, I don't know. He's running from people, trying to get away, smashing through the subway. He happens upon... Something, I don't know. Is this the place where all that destruction was happening before? And then we're going, this is a, it says 1967. So this is a flashback in time from other stuff. Uh, who cares? Well, I'm not interested in that. Um, believable details. Uh, F4 Phantom, I believe that is. All these helicopters. Jeez, look at all the details, the helmets and everything going on here. This is Lynch. I believe. So they're bringing in some of the Wildstorm characters here. And more action, more destruction, more blowing things up. It's pretty awesome looking. It's a little chaotic, but it's visually wild. Look at this weird ass jet thing. It's crazy shape. That feels like something out of an anime. More blowing up, more fighting, more destruction. That's some wild stuff. I am on issue two, right? Yeah, good Lord. I kind of got lost on what the hell's going on. But we still haven't seen the Golden Transformer. Where is the hero of our fucking book? We're halfway through issue two, and we still haven't seen him. Like, I think we're getting to him here. He finds something and opens up things and technological stuff and whatever, whatever. He's saying neato. I know. Show me the cool shit. I mean, again, all this artwork is great, but I want to see the main character. I want to see the guy who we're here to see. He found something, and here he is. It's a pretty awesome payoff for all the weight. Um, God, look at this gun. The shape of the barrels and everything in perspective. and 
Damn, that's wild. There's another shot of him just looking awesome. Look at that belt of ammo zipping around him. Eat your heart out, Mr. Liefeld. And he draws the same fucking gun. To his credit, the same barrels and shit, he doesn't just change it up. And it should be. It's the same thing. When you draw something this specific, but you got to have it in multiple panels, you got to draw that same damn thing over and over and over. But Golden Transformer, he shows up at the end of episode or book two, and then it's done. God damn it. Book three better pay off like a motherfucker. All right. Book three. Close-up of it looks like a pilot's helmet. Gears everywhere. What is on the back page? It's kind of an indecipherable shot of some kind of technological something. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I care, but it's pretty awesome. This, so this looks to me like, like it's a pilot's helmet. Like this is... This is Mr. Thomas Cruise in his F-18, and he's flying up against this anime mech that's shooting all those missiles at him. He's about to die. Um, interesting cover choice. Jesus, Lord, look at the detail on this perspective. Like, high perspective up here, so you get your perspective items coming down this way, but then a vanishing point down here, so you got things this way, and then things this way. Man, how do you even figure these perspectives out um, on just a sheet of paper? God, that would be a challenge. This is Gen 13 characters right here. Roxy and uh, Grunge and a bunch of whoever's. But look at that splash page to open the book. They're inside a club. Big old rave party. Everyone just going crazy. Things start shaking, rumbling. I bet a bunch of mechanical transformers are going to start showing up and murdering the shit out of... Holy shit. Look at... They blew the fuck out of the building. Good lord. I thought they were going to just show up and just start, like, having a fight inside. It appears... Giant explosion. And then look at the explosions on this. I got to bring this close to the camera. Like, look at the force of the explosions blowing out the windows there and then blowing the roof off the building. That is a hell of an ex ex impressive exploding building. And then you got cars down here. You got a Corvette flipping over. Here comes, I'm guessing this is Golden Transformer Hero because he slams down and he's got to face off against these four other, the, the Decepticons, I guess, right? He's the Autobot and these are the Decepticons. Look at the details in this fucking gun. Holy shit. I don't know how he does this. Every issue, every page, look at that detail. I mean, you'd think this would take him 10,000 years to do. Some people think that just because something is hyper-detailed, it takes them a long time. That's a valid idea, but it doesn't necessarily mean that some people are just fast. Some people draw very slick, clean, not hyper-detailed artwork like this. A much cleaner line, but they're just naturally slower. Not that they're not working. They're not off playing video games and procrastinating. They're drawing, but they're slower and more meticulous. And it takes them more time. And some people, I'm guessing this Richard Bennett guy, maybe, I just feel like he sits down, he buckles down, and he gets the work done. I don't know if there was a big delay in the release of these issues. I don't seem to recall that, but I wonder if he just works fast. Jesus, it looks good. Um, so, of course, the mecha guys here are going to be fighting. This is a crazy, like, I don't know. I, 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 I don't remember what's going on in the story. I don't know if this is like a representation of the main hero guy. No, he's, he's looking through his vision, and uh, he can see through them. I guess. I think of this cop here is this guy here. He's got a regular... Look at this gun. He's like seeing 3D. And so the artist draws like a see-through on the gun where you can see like the bullets in the magazine loaded up and the ones in the chamber ready to fire. Like the, uh, the attention to detail. God. And then look at this. I think it's a gun pointing at our golden transformer hero. Can we please fight? Where's all the destruction I mean, they teased me, teased us on issue one with a double page spread of absolute golden transformer destruction. Like the city is fucking annihilated. 
Um, are we going to get to see this? I honestly don't remember. So he flips his arm over and a, a device flips over into his hand. It becomes like a lightsaber staff thing. So fight, fight, fight. Awesome. I feel like he's, there's some of these panels look like he's skimping on the backgrounds a little bit. Of course you're getting to the, it's a three issue miniseries. This is the last issue. He's probably been just, just shooting his artistic load all over every page and he's tired and he needs some Gatorade and needs to lie down and take a 20 minute nap before he can perform again. So it's not quite the hyper detail, but it's still pretty good. He can draw a sexy babe. Got to get the sweet, sweet ass shot in there, kicking him right in the face. Come on, Golden Transformer, start murdering these people. What in the fucking space station? God, it's Mir. There's a space shuttle. You know, the Russian Mir space station, 120 miles above Earth. Uh, that space station did not look this detailed, but holy shit, look at the astronauts. Just look at everything. Jesus. Sorry. I know I'm cussing a lot. I know I'm getting really excited. Um, there's a lot of words there. I got a separated page here, so we'll have to watch this. But then you're getting into some jets. Um, this is funny. So you got an F-18 here. Uh, not to be a nerd. This says YF-23. So I wonder if this is around that time, I think it is, when the American Air Force was trying to come up with their um, fifth generation fighter and it was coming down to the Raptor, the F-22 or the F-23. And um, it looks like maybe the artist was either thinking the F-23 was going to be the one that won the contract. It was not. Or he just liked it and threw it in here. That is a great shot of that jet. Um, God, look at this shot. This cockpit almost looks like an F-16. That is an F-16 right there. So you got an a F-18, an F-16, an F-23, which never goes into production. I, I like jets a little bit. Um, and of course, um, yeah, that's funny. F-16, 18, and 23. That's right there. That's them right there. Attention to detail. Um, I like this shot of this bad guy and like he's just shooting with his gun, this big giant muzzle flash. You can almost just hear it just like do, 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 do. just shredding the F-23 um, of all jets because that's, that's the hyper advanced one. The F-16 is old as shit and so is the F-18. Those are, you know, fourth generation fighters and they're old news. But you got the newest, most modern one getting taken out. Engines blowing up careening into you now he's a smoking hole yep got the f-16 he's going down lots of explosions and fire like his energy and movement in this shit i mean i love this the bullet shooting and the way it's shredding the plane a lot of great movement destruction on the ground um God, it looks like our hero, Mr. Golden Transformer, can like put up like a force field right here. All this exploding destruction comes comes at him. Um, ironically, the F-18. This is Tom Cruise. This is Tom Cruise Maverick right here. He's in the jet. I wasn't even joking. He's even in an F-18. Um, God, I'm trying to see. What the hell is he? What, the, what is the point of all these panels? He's They want to... Got to take him out. So is he shooting at him it's really interesting to have this jet here here and here but i'm like i don't know what they're getting at maybe the next page will tell us let's just keep going this is funny that this f-16 is like burning in and they got the pilot like jumping out of the cockpit that is not how that works these, these jets are flying at like two or three hundred miles an hour probably minimum when they they auger in man they blow up and you're you're a or smoking crater. This was great. I thought this was incredibly awesome. We've all seen anime with the mechas and shit like that, where they launch all these little missiles that come off them and go flying up. This girl character, I don't know where she gets these missiles from, but there, it's like this technological whatever that can make them these badass techno monsters that can kind of create stuff. But the shot of her standing here, and then she launches all these missiles up, and it takes out the jet. He's spinning in. She's standing there triumphant. What a great angle. Like you're at street level. The camera angle is straight on by her feet, but we're looking up at the city. Great perspective. 
Jets burning in, probably going to plow into a skyscraper or something. Oh, <laughs> it's, that's exactly what it does. He's burning in. You see the reflection on a window. Explosion. Boom. Helicopters coming in here. Man, the collateral damage. The humans dying in this thing must be a, a, enormous. Golden Transformer. He's like, no, don't shoot me. I'm on your side, I guess. I don't know. Um, I guess they activated some kind of electronic pulse that knocks him down. That's a great shot. I think he liked drawing this girl character because it's probably a little bit simple. It's just basically like a sexy naked figure with some technological doodads on her. Um, the other guys are all kind of getting knocked out. Here's here's our hero, Mr. Brass Transformer. Um, Jesus, look at this destroyed city. I guess this is where we ended up at the beginning of the comic. I don't know what they did to have like skyscrapers broken in the middle and leaning in on each other like... It didn't seem like it was that level of city smashing destruction, but it looks awesome. Um, I don't know what's going on here. They're standing around. They're talking detailed artwork, crazy cool stuff, crazy mecha techno stuff. Some girl doing something. I don't know. I haven't read this in a long time, and I just I couldn't be bothered to reread it. It was a little bit complicated, and I didn't kind of care. I'm here for the artwork. Um. Doing some different stuff with some cross-hatching to give it a different vibe. I like it. I really like this face. Yeah, look at that. Really strange. I don't know if he's in some dream fantasy world here. I have no idea what's going on there. Maybe he's learning how to control this shit that's in him. It's like bonded to him, so he has to learn how to control it. That would make sense. A lot of crazy cross-hatching. Look at this cute little kitty, but this kitty's got the techno goo inside him too. Look at the textures on the fur pattern of this cat. That's a really weird looking face, but it works. Um, and it just ends with our hero guy. He's like, um, he says, it wasn't a nightmare that I had and the viruses didn't destroy each other. Only his was destroyed. The brass virus is now a part of me, or I'm a part of it. I'm not sure how I know that, because I don't feel any different. I guess I'm. it's an optimistic understanding that I didn't have before of myself, of life. I don't know. The only thing I know for sure is that I can kick anybody's ass. And that's the end of the story. What a great shot. Simple one-point perspective of a city, rainy, car... All kinds of craziness going on there. And then that's the end of the book. So I know I skipped over a bunch because I just, I couldn't, I don't know. I'm not reading the story. So, holy shit. And you think that some of those artists in the the uh, Wildstorm Studios, I mean, it's not Wildstorm, I don't think. It's Image, but is it Wildstorm? It might be. But all those guys working for them, that Ryan Benjamin and the Brett Booth and um, those those guys that working in the studio. And then along comes this Richard Bennett doing inks over Jim Lee. And he gets to get out here and do this book. Whether the story is good is secondary to like, holy shit, that artwork was some of the most impressive, eye-catching stuff in any of these books ever. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think any more stories were ever produced of this uh, character. I don't think any more ever come of it. I don't know how successful it was. I mean, I'm sure it did pretty well for him. But I don't think Brass ever saw any more anything. Never saw the light of day anywhere, as far as I know. But, I mean, good God. I mean, just the artistic intensity going on there i don't know how anybody could draw that way um it's incredible it's fantastic so richard bennett good lord man i i kind of got to go look you up now i wonder if you got some social media out there i got to see what you're doing these days um amazing stuff i again i know i wasn't particularly like keen on the story i i read it one time years ago when i got it and i just kind of glanced through it you get the point you get the basic idea um I'm not saying I can do any better, but holy shit, artistically, man, this puts him on like a level of like, you know, you had Travis Charest that was joining the studio and took over Wildcats from Jim Lee. And 
he started out all right, but man, he just kept getting better and better and became like the premier artist of Wildstorm, kind of in the way that Michael Turner became the premier artist of Top Cow with uh, Witchblade and then Fathom. And who is the premier artist to come out of Extreme Studios? I guess Stephen Platt? But he was kind of already a hotshot artist coming off of the Marvel stuff he was doing and then the Prophet books. Just the few that he did were pretty uh, pretty wild. Um, he's not as good as these guys, though. Probably outsold them, though, which is the fucked up part. Anyway, I'm just rambling. Holy shit. Brass. Artistic genius. Holy Lord. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. Thanks for joining me. See you on the next one.